This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this day as we gather to hear the word of our Lord and be encouraged by the Holy Spirit through his word. You can see probably, I think, yes, you can probably see that, that there are some, some issues that are being worked through with the technology. I would just encourage you for your own uh, use during the service to put your, hymn, your bulletin there in at page 203 to follow along with the order of service and uh, for the singing of the hymns. We are uh, so thankful for our visitors that are here today. Pray God's blessings upon you that you get a chance to meet members of our, our church family here at Mount Calvary. And we begin with our opening hymn, 595. We rise and turn to page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made Amen. heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
we confess. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate I will extol you my God and King and bless your name forever and ever every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the name of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament lesson appointed for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost is from the ninth chapter of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from the third chapter of Ephesians. And this, also, and this also is our sermon text for this day. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask, or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise. Alleluia. 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 Things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, 
Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the winds ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the words of the Nicene Creed on page 206. And I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Be seated as we sing hymn 754.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our sermon text is is from Philippians 3, a portion of which we read again. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is our text. You know, I was going to say a word. Actually, in my kind of opening thoughts about the the Olympics, and and of course, I can't say that now without um, what what happened at the opening ceremony and the the awful blasphemous disgrace of of the transgender drag queens uh, enacting in the opening ceremony the most holy supper of our Christ, and we. We pray God have mercy on this world, that he draw them back to the Savior, that, uh, that these games have nothing to do with that, but apparently everything does now. So God have mercy on us, and may Satan be put down, and Christ exalted and finally victorious. I say that because I wanted to begin by saying that you all know about uh, the Olympics starting this past Friday. And I don't know about you, I will probably hit a few of the, maybe the highlight kind of events that happened during the Olympics. For the most part, it's a yawner for me because I didn't grow up playing most of the games, even things like soccer. I mean, I know you get the ball in the net, but don't know the rules, really. I don't know, couldn't tell a good dive from a bad dive unless it was a belly flop, so it really isn't, isn't much of interest to me. But I do admire the athleticism of, of the, those that are coming to participate, those that it's really obviously all about, the athleticism, the dedication, the discipline that it took, probably from maybe very small kids in a pool to, uh, to very small kids out on that mat and, and year over year putting in all that work for these few days of competition. I'm thinking about it today for, for a different kind of a reason because whether your bodies are kind of flabby and maybe a little out of shape or, or whether you're fit, God calls us and our young people to, in the nurture in, and for ourselves, to in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to be brought up in the faith. This week, our church celebrated that together again with our our vacation Bible school with Celebrate the Savior and all the helpers. We're so thankful for your participation and and being a part of that, sharing the good news. We do that in small catechism. We do it with our confirmation classes as we teach the faith. We study the word of God, our Savior, together as we did this morning. We attend church and Sunday school, and, and some of you, I hope, read your Bibles at home, and uh, use that portals of prayer in your home devotions. All of that is really a, a spiritual training and a discipline because we know that as great as, as getting a gold medal might be, we know that even that is a perishable thing. God calls us to prepare ourselves, to discipline, to train our, our thoughts for winning the heavenly crown of life that comes only through faith in Christ Jesus. Probably for a lot of you, the most intensive time of that, I mean, classes, extra classes, and memorizing the the text, the most intensive time probably was for you confirmation class, and no doubt your dear pastor at that point reminded you on that day that confirmation is not graduation, It's not the end of anything. It's the beginning of a life in God's Word. The pastor in the church, Bible school and Sunday school, would always and should always be there to help you along your journey. 
But often after those years, many of us fell out of training. We made it a practice uh, to some point and then took our eyes, maybe it was after mom or dad weren't pushing it anymore or, or maybe after we weren't teaching Sunday school anymore. We just took our eyes off the ball, being formed in the faith as spiritual warriors running for the crown. But we have a lot more significant crown to run for than the gold medal. So long as God gives us the gracious gift of, of our lives, this is the time of our training. This is the time to be rooted, to be grounded in God's grace. That is to say, his undeserved love for us. Any God-pleasing growth of his church really can't just be warm bodies that fill our pews. That's a kind of a thing, but, but rather true growth must be what Jesus called a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. And it takes a discipline, a spiritual discipline, uh, in some ways comparable to the, the athletes in their training, to push out all of those distractions and say, I'm going to be there to be in Bible class because it's still important because I don't know everything. Because God's word, even if I know everything, God's word can still be new to me every time I open the pages. Faith comes through hearing the word of Christ, Romans 10 says. So there's never a time when, when we've reached the goal. God's always grounding us solidly into his grace and his work. Because he wants to make us mighty, strengthened, forgiven, sanctified saints by feeding us on the body and blood of Christ our Savior and rooting and establishing our roots deeply in his promises. See, faith dies when the only thing to sustain it is the, the puny resources of our own willpower. It's like an Olympic athlete training their bodies. We have to be fed constantly with the right kind of nutrition that gift of God's, of God's word and his sacraments. So today is a reminder as, as this day and every day forward, as you're going to be deluged now with the Olympics, that your training continues. Even if it's been long years since you regularly heard and studied the word, God's calling out to you today. Take up the sword of the Spirit. It's the word of God, Ephesians will say here, here in a couple of chapters. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for rebu rebuke, for correction, for training, instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be equipped for every good work. So we need that. We need the spirit to form us because we don't have the spiritual wherewithal on our own. The Bible says the sinful, the mind of the flesh is an enemy of Christ. Romans 3 says, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But that's why God came in Christ to bring us back to him. You and I are called by God in the waters of baptism for an imperishable crown. Remember, Revelation 2 says, be faithful unto death, Jesus says there, and I will give you the crown of life. Now, that's a medal to run for. Now, you and I don't have the, the strength or spiritual resources to win the crown of righteousness, but we do have a Savior who won it for us. Notice how God-centered our text is for today. I mean, who is doing the verbs and has the, the verbs being done to them? I bow my knees before the Father, that according to the riches of His grace, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit. See, you don't have the, the, the strength to muster up on your own and to be saved, to be forgiven in Jesus. It's God's gift. It's God's work in you. The world might say, well, you can do it on your own or you don't need to do it at all. All the roads kind of lead to the same place. The devil wants you to think everybody who's kind of nice according to whatever their puny... Um, 
calculus uh, is that they're going to be saved. Not so. The one who receives the medal is the one faithful unto death. You can't climb into heaven by your good works, but God has reached from heaven to lift you up and save you in his love. And not only did he send Jesus to share your flesh and blood, I mean, to make up for the miserable failures that, that we are and would be, but in Jesus, God shed his blood for you at Calvary so that you and I can live with him in the joys of heaven. Now, even what we do together and every Sunday when we meet together, we, we Lutherans often talk not less about, well, we're going to worship or we're going to church, but rather usually that we go to the divine service because we want to emphasize what happens here is not what we do for God, our, our worship of him, that certainly happens, but rather God coming to serve his people in his word God has set a table, and he speaks his word of life to us. At the sacrament of the altar, God sets his table and invites his children. And our text says that you, God grants you to be strengthened by, strengthened with power, to be strengthened, God doing. Paul prays that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, being rooted and grounded. You didn't do that. Jesus does that. He grounds you. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ. And, and in a dry, dry and dying world, God, the Holy Spirit's in a sense watering you into your Savior, giving you strong roots that are anchored in his resurrection. Paul prayed for, for the Ephesians, and he prayed for all of us that you may be filled. God's doing that for you. And he would do that to, for you and in you through his word, in his gracious gifts. You can't fill yourself with God's goodness, but his grace in Christ belongs to us every day in his word, in our Bible studies together, in your homes as you read the word individually, as we gather for, for worship, as we have our, our Bible school and what have you. God's filling you with his fullness as you come to his altar and receive the true flesh and blood of Jesus for your forgiveness. Faith really is nothing more than the, the empty hands that receive the gifts that our gracious God gives. Unbelief pushes them away, doesn't want anything to do with them, doesn't have time for God. Again, Paul writes, God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or imagine. See, God's able to do it. It's God's power, Paul says, is at work within us. Now, in a way, the Olympics are kind of a celebration of, of mankind's strength and their ability. I mean, when they're right. When they're right, when they don't get hijacked by nuttiness and sinfulness and, and demonic activity. When they're right, they're a celebration of mankind's strength and ability to accomplish a lot with hard work and perseverance and dedication. But training for the gift of God's crown is just that, a gift of his grace. Praise God, our text says, God does more than we could ever ask or desire. Oh, he's like, ask or imagine God's cross won death and resurrection. It makes us winners, eternally victorious, not because of anything in us, but because God chose us in Christ, because God sent his son to rescue us by his redeeming death and resurrection. And we can, in Jesus, wear the only real medal that matters, the crown of eternal life. It's not your work. It's not our merit. It's not our goodness. But don't stop training. Grow in the grace and knowledge of God. Never close off your hearts to, the, to God's grace by refusing to be fed in his sacraments, in his word. Your God loves you with a love that truly surpasses knowledge. God wants 
to give and give and to forgive and forgive until we share in his heavenly victory. So the God who forms you totally by his grace and nurtures your life of faith, he also put you in this world to run a race. The race that's marked out for you. And he knows where, where that path leads. He calls you to love him with all of your heart. He calls you to love your neighbor as yourself. While our faith is passive before God in that we live from receiving the gifts, it's active in the world where God sets you on your path to do the good works that God's prepared in advance for you to do wherever your race leads. So keep training. Keep your eyes on the prize of eternal life. Know that it's a gift from God and let your life be one of thankful service to him for his great mercies in Christ our Savior. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God which passes human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And we remember in our prayers for our sick and hurting, especially those that are undergoing treatments or tests or those that are recovering from any illness. We remember Brittany's friend, Mark, for Kathy and Aiden, for Mary, for Kay's friend, Shirley, for Derek, who's been in the hospital at uh, St. Mary's this week, for Art and Lisa and Guy and Rebecca and Anita, for Dan and Rodney and Jim and Missy, for Mike, who's recovering from, from his seizures, for Joyce and Mitch and Jana Lee, for Fern, and Fern's out of the hospital now and, and is in um, recovery at a nursing home and is going through, through therapy. For Leroy as he continues to, to work on his knee and his knee replacement. For Nancy and Dave and for Nancy Rose's sister. I'll conclude each of our petitions with, in peace let us pray to the Lord. And the congregation responds, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God of grace, we praise and thank you that as we are buffeted by the storms of life and as we pass through, through the trials of these days, that you come to join us and to journey with us, that, that with you we travel safely, and we pray that you would help us and give us courage as we pass through the, the trials of this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Father God, we praise and thank you that you send us your Holy Spirit to fill us to the fullest of the measure of Christ. We pray that you would do far more abundantly among us and among your church throughout all the world than all that we could ask or imagine. We're in the midst of a mighty spiritual war, gracious Father, against all the acts of the, the devil. And we pray that you would strike down all of those who set themselves up in opposition to you. We pray that you would bring them to a living faith through Christ the Savior so that they know the joy of the eternal crown that you've prepared for your beloved. And we pray that you would help us in the midst of the distractions of life to be disciplined, that you would help those that, of us who have wandered away from the path of, of being together in your word, that you would draw us back that you would fill our hearts and minds with the joy that comes from, from your spirit as you create in us clean hearts. We pray that you bless your church in this place, especially God of grace. We thank you for our young people in this vacation Bible school of this week now past. Cause your Holy Spirit to strengthen them in the joy of the message that they've heard that throughout their lives they also celebrate the Savior. We thank you for our helpers, our volunteers, and those who participated in this work of our congregation, that you would work 
mightily also in their hearts for the good news that they've heard and that you would continue to build your church here at Mount Calvary. We pray you bless our preschool, that you draw students and families to help fill our classrooms. We pray that you be with Dennis and Lorna and and keep them in Kenya and preserve the word proclaimed at point of grace. And God, make us ready to receive that crown of life that you've prepared for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, today we commend to you our brothers and sisters who are sick or hurting, those that we have named in our hearts this day, and those that are known only only in our hearts. We pray that you would give them courage and confidence in Jesus and their hope in him. We pray that you be with all of the caregivers as they walk through the valley with their dear ones. And if it be according to your good and perfect will, we pray that you heal them and give patience and trust until you bring your perfect deliverance, peace, and health here in time or with you in eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. God, we pray that you bless all of our elected leaders, that you be with our president, governor, or mayor, all of those who rule over us, that you grant them wisdom, that through their labors that there might be a climate to prevail wherein your church can preach the saving gospel and the Holy Spirit bring many who don't yet know you to your word of life and salvation. We pray you bless our doctors and nurses, our farms and fields, as through their hands we receive your daily bread, our emergency workers, our fire and, and policemen, our military personnel throughout the world that you would protect and defend, and especially Caleb, that you would watch over him and, and his loved ones and bring them safe reunions. Let us pray to the Lord. Father God, you've made us fellow citizens with the saints in light. Keep us in this faith as long as we live in this world, that we would eagerly await the day when we stand before you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as the offerings are received.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adore heaven and earth with all. Of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemn the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you've prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith.
Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Father, oh, may God's blessings in your baptism continue to grow. Take in the, this is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same. In faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Be seated for our closing hymn. A few announcements before we take our leave this day. Would, Lori, would you? Okay, that's okay. We can do that for her. We thank Lori for her leadership to be our director for Celebrate the Savior this week. And, and Leah, they worked together to, to put us on good footing. We're so thankful for that. Probably almost every one of you helped in some way, whether it was was sitting with kids or taking them to the bathroom and or cooking a meal or or helping to serve a meal we're at, or donating cookies or whatever it might be thank you for for that effort that you put in to help us we had a very successful week i know there was over 50 i think all of the days were over 50 kids to be a part of it so thank you for that lwml is meeting thursday at, at one o'clock on Thursday. And I guess Thursday's also this, and I should have thought a bit about it, Jim and Dee, is your anniversary. So God bless you and keep you. What number will it be? 54. No, 53. 53. <laughs> that's pretty good. You got another year for 54, so that's good. We God bless you and keep you and and enjoy your family today as you celebrate that. I wanted to, to include in prayer too and didn't write it down, 
Margaret's family too, as her sister has gone to be with Jesus. And Margaret, we remember you in our, in our prayers and, and pray God's comfort and peace for you. All right, at the end of the month, there's going to be a meal. We're going to have a vicar that will be with us. And you can see his information. You've been getting his newsletters now for, for nine months. You can see that information in your bulletins about Vicar Beery. And on the 18th, we'd like to take a free will offering to support him and his family while they're doing their uh, hitch at, at Fort Wayne at the seminary. Because there are costs that go beyond tuition and everything when you have a family because you've got, still got to feed kids and all those things. So if you'd like to contribute, we're going to do that the week before so that we can share it with him on the week he's with us. And then we'll have the dinner after the service with him and his family. God bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day.